Now, many people in the UK love getting out into the beautiful British countryside. Up in the uplands, we may be walking or mountain biking or just going out for a picnic. And of course, our amazing landscape has been created over thousands of years by farming. And those landscapes up in the uplands particularly are created by grazing animals, specifically sheep that have been bred to live and survive in those particular areas. In the UK, we've got over 60 different breeds of sheep with wonderful names. So in the Lake District, we've got the Herdwicks. On the Welsh mountains, we've got the Black Welsh Mountain and the Badgerface. Of course, in the Lowlands too, we have breeds like the Oxford Down, the Shropshire, the Portland. All of these animals selectively bred to thrive and survive with the climate and topography and farming systems in those regions. And what's essential is that we hang on to them. People have enjoyed eating sheep meat for centuries. And in fact, in Victorian times, they particularly enjoyed mutton. Mutton is meat from older sheep. And nowadays, people are looking at the different breeds and different ages for various flavours and tastes. And that's exciting. What we need to do is encourage more people to eat them and therefore more people will keep them. And that will help our farming communities thrive and keep the landscape looking the way it does. So we've been farming sheep in the uplands here in the UK for an excess of 5,000 years, you know, and I would argue that our, our landscape, uh, our ecology, our wildlife has all evolved around sheep farming and, uh, and, and grazing activities. And I think, you know, with the pressure or, or what's expected of farmers these days to deliver multiple outcomes, you know, good quality food, alongside great landscapes, good environments, you know, maintaining our wildlife, we've got to keep those traditional systems going because they're all completely integrated and interlinked. The sheep that we see on the North York Moors have been bred here for generations. They've been bred to survive, and be productive as well. The Heather Moorland is triple SI, it's a site of special scientific interest. And so the sheep maintain the heather, they graze the shoots, they graze the moss in between, they graze the millennia grass as well, and the bilberry, and it, and it maintains the habitats, the various habitats that make this national park so unique. In those more remote regions where agriculture and, and working on the land is probably the number one um, industry or job opportunity for people, then if we take sheep farming away, we lose a lot of that, uh, that, that community activity and we take away what is the foundation of rural economies, actually. A lot of these small farms, uh, again, they generate that, that local economy. Heritage sheep are the base of what we do as sheep farmers in the country now. Heritage sheep are also part of our DNA as sheep farmers in how we look after our sheep and the landscape. We have a tradition of being custodians of the landscape and the sheep breeds in this country. What we've got on our sheep farms at the moment across the UK is this huge diversity of breeds of different farming types. And uh, if we look at what goes on in the marketplace and in, in, our, in our shops effectively, you know, that diversity is not reflected in the way that we present our products to, to the public. And I think, A, the industry is missing a trick in terms of uh, not using that diversity to present our products, but we're also not trying to, we're not um, making sure that the marketplace actually supports those traditional systems. The Heritage Sheep Scheme is, uh, is built on a, 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 a mechanism of just allowing farmers to explain uh, to the consumers uh, what their product's all about and it allows people to differentiate more in the marketplace. So uh, it's built on a, a premise of uh, A, B and C, A being for age, B being for breed and C being for countryside. So it allows uh, farmers to, to talk about the age of the sheep meat that they're producing, the breed that it's come from, and the type of countryside where, where, where it was raised. We know at the moment that we need to do much, much more to add value to our products and to make sure that our markets work for us. And uh, you know what we've seen in many of the other food sectors, the bread market would be a good example, the beer market would be another example, cheeses for some time, and even gin now. You know We've seen some of these other food segments that have really made um, something positive about diversity and product differentiation. And if we, we're not doing that at all, uh, with sheep meat, yet we know that we've got that variation and that diversity on our farms. It's a marketing plan that fits in alongside uh, all of the other market options that the sheep industry has got. But the one area that is missing, I think, is a specialist market for artisan sheep products that can be built on the diversity we've got on our UK sheep farms. 
um, you know, we produce lamb, which would normally be uh, from animals up to a year of age. Uh, we produce hogget, which would normally be from one year to two year. And then we produce mutton, which would uh, most commonly be recognised as being animals over two years of age. We've got a huge consumer base here in the UK, some 64.5 million consumers. And we know that their interest at the moment is around uh, food innovation, food experiences. People get very different um, taste experiences from eating um, sheep meat from different ages and different breeds and from different locations in the UK. And yet we try sometimes to try and cram that into one box and, and sell it as land. We, we've, lo we've lost something in having not uh, had mutton available for some years now after the war pri primarily. But if you go back in history, the Victorians were absolutely passionate about different breeds of sheep producing different flavours of mutton. So as part of this exercise to produce this project, we've done a number of taste trials and others have done them as well, looking at different breeds and different ages and seeing in um, results from, from the public what, what the differences are. The Victorians love to discuss the different breeds of, of, of sheep meat, particularly with mutton. And they all had their favourites and they would discuss endlessly and quite passionately about it. Earl Spencer was a, a great fan of Welsh mountain mutton. In fact, he kept a, a flock of them uh, on his estate so that he always had access to Welsh mountain mutton. And Mrs. Beaton was another great fan of mutton. Her favourite was Southdown. Because the Victorians were so keen on these different flavours, we tried doing some taste trials ourselves. And uh, we tried a, diff a number of different breeds of, of sheep, older sheep, mutton mostly, and the, the results were staggering. They were overwhelmingly that people did taste a difference and that all the differences were positive. All the experiences were positive. We've got a photograph of um, people's plates and they voted with their plate when they were doing these tastings as to what they enjoyed and what they didn't. And the box that I didn't like it was empty. One important piece of, uh, of evidence that we have from a YouGov survey which we carried out earlier this year was that two main groups of people seem very keen on this idea and they're the two groups which the sheep industry at the moment are missing out on. That's the younger people and the people who eat meat but not sheep meat. And if we can bring this element of excitement and choice and comparative experiences into it, I think that will attract a lot more people. This is a great opportunity to offer British consumers something different, a diversity, something to discuss and compare as they would do with many other foods now. We've been looking at working on uh, some real groundbreaking technology on traceability, which is using a system called blockchain, um, which seals in pieces of information all along the supply chain and then uh, prints it onto a label into a, one of these square barcodes and the consumer will be able to get an app, put it on their phone, uh, scan the, the code, and this will give the consumer all the information they need about where the animal's from, uh, potentially the name of the farmer, possibly a link to his own website, uh, all the way through to how long it was hung for, um, and, and so on. And it's not only for the retail consumer, but also in pubs and restaurants. They can promote locally produced uh, older sheep, lamb, whatever they want, uh, by breed, and all that information will be locked into that traceability system so that the, the landlord or the restaurateur can tell the entire story to their, to their guests when they come and eat. The idea of this project is not only to promote new people to do this uh, diversification, but also the existing people to give them more help and give them a channel to promote their own products. My family have been butchers in this area for over a hundred years through five generations of the same family. Yeah. We operate a small abattoir that provides services to local farmers as well as processing meat for our own retail business. The farmers that actually use our abattoir consist of a wide variety of farmers, most of them hill farmers, totalling about 170 different farmers. A lot of those farmers bring to us small groups heritage breeds which are uh, very important to us in the Peak District because we have the Derbyshire Gritstone and we also have the Woodlands which are lambs that are produced on the moor 
and they um, mature over quite a long period of time so they have a long time on the natural vegetation but these heritage breeds of sheep are very important because the flavour that these little sheep produce is absolutely fantastic and we look forward to every January, February when these lambs actually come through to us you know to sell in the shop but also the farmers that actually bring the animals to us for their own little businesses and that be box schemes, farmers markets, farm shops. So we're very pleased to actually to be able to support this heritage uh, uh, sheep scheme because we see it as both important for us with the local hill farmers here in the Peak District and also to maintain a throughput for our, our, our small abattoir. There, there's several principles behind this scheme. It's first of all to keep the gene pool going, the, the, the huge variety, the unique variety of sheep breeds and their genetics that we have, which is in grave danger. But also the communities which produce those sheep is also under a lot of stress and, stress and pressure. And if we can offer uh, sons or daughters who want to return to the family farm in the Lake District or wherever it is and have uh, a, a, an enterprise to start off with, this is one which would fit the bill ideally. So we try and keep these rural economies which are based on livestock farming and have no choice but to do livestock farming, we give them an opportunity to, to make an extra margin which may make the difference as to whether the, the, the children stay on the farm or not. With, with this Heritage Meat Initiative we have a great opportunity to introduce a new taste to people who have never tasted proper lamb before.